Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about what companies are truly looking for. Now, many people fit the basic qualifications for a job posting, but companies don't want those people. They want someone that goes above and beyond, somebody that stands out. So I'm going to talk about, in this video, the top 10 things that companies are truly looking for when they're hiring a candidate, in addition to meeting the basic qualifications, like having an education and understanding basic electrical concepts. Number one, definitely, is that you initially stand out in the application process. Your resume has to be one page. It needs to be succinct. It needs to describe impacts rather than responsibilities. You don't know how many terrible resumes these recruiters are getting every single day. Resumes that are three, four, five pages, tons of responsibilities, no impact, you know, typed out in 10 point font, extremely difficult to read, just by making a very clean, concise, and beautiful resume that stands out. It's colorful and it really shows exactly what you're looking for and it matches with the job description. You'll stand out immediately. The same thing goes for your LinkedIn profile. Have a very good picture on your LinkedIn profile. Be sure you're smiling, look enthusiastic. Fill out the entire thing. This shows that you are willing to put in the effort, which leads to number two. You must seem like you are making an effort, and this really works well if it is honest. Send recruiters emails. This shows that you're making an effort. After every single interview, send the interviewer an email thanking them. Tell them you're really excited about the opportunity. And if there was a conversation that wasn't able to be finished during the interview, finish it over email. Give them additional information about yourself. It really personalizes the experience. It makes the interviewer remember you inside of their mind as an exceptional candidate. Not everybody does this. People just apply, go through interviews. They don't follow up. Thank the interviewer. Next, you really need to know your technical fundamentals. Fundamentals are everything. I once interviewed with a company that was designing a force sensor, and they said that nobody inside of that company had ever worked on a force sensor before they were hired. They only knew their fundamentals, truly. Now, this company is now huge and has totally revolutionized force sensors. So it really is much more about the deep technical fundamentals as it is the deep depth inside of a specific topic. If you know your fundamentals, you can apply it to every single thing in electrical engineering. They will test this. You know, you will have an initial phone interview that will go through fundamentals, or, or they'll send home a take-home exam, or during your on-site, somebody will ask you about something that you might have only remembered in college, but it's still really important. That's why we're going to go over all of this stuff in this course. Next, and probably most important, is that you communicate clearly and you're friendly. During the interview process, you shouldn't use the words um a lot. You should be very clear and concise in the way that you communicate. You should be friendly. You should be smiling. You should be enthusiastic. You definitely don't want to come across as cold. And you don't want to come across as somebody that sits in the corner of a room all day and works by themselves. You want to be somebody that can work well with a team, somebody that can communicate their deepest thoughts and emotions. Somebody that can explain exactly what their responsibilities are, what they're going to do for this day and this week, and what their short-term and near-term goals are, what they need from other people. You really have to be friendly, which leads into the next point. You have to work well with a team. No company, no product is going to be a single-person show. You're going to have to work with others. You'll have to work with firmware engineers mechanical engineers, most likely, especially if you're building an electromechanical device. They're going to need to know what your responsibilities are, you need to know what theirs are, and you have to work effectively together. If you are not a team player, most companies are not going to want to hire you. Next, you need to be driven and passionate. In order to be a good electrical engineer, you can't just take this course and say, okay, I'm a good electrical engineer. You actually have to like what you're doing. You have to be driven. You have to have personal projects. You've got to be passionate about this subject. Otherwise, you're going to be a B-level engineer. Next, you can think critically to solve problems. Every single interview I've had, somebody has given me an open-ended problem. And most of the open-ended problems were actually not related to electrical engineering. 
And they claim that they do this because they want to see how I think. How do I actually think through a problem critically? What steps do I take? Do I look at it at a broad perspective and then work through the details? Or do I go through the details first? In the non-technical interview section of this course, I'm going to go through some of these problems that interviewers pose to see if you can think critically. Furthermore, in the non-interview section, I'm also going to show you how you can communicate clearly, how you can show that you work well with a team, and how you can give good examples of past experiences when they do ask you questions. So just remember, in addition to the basic fundamentals of electrical engineering, you really have to be a good human being. You have to stand out. You have to work well with a team. You have to communicate friendly. You have to be driven. You have to be passionate. You have to be nice. You know, it's not good enough just to be good at the technical stuff. You have to be able to communicate. You have to stand out. If you follow all the guidance I'm going to give you in this course, you'll increase your chances of standing out. Make an effort. Don't be lazy. It really will be worth all the effort in the end when you get a high paying tech job. So I hope you now understand what companies are looking for. The next lecture, we're going to talk about Glassdoor and then the typical electrical engineering interview process. I'll see you there.